Hello, it is me, Erica. So today I'm gonna make some art. Like art that is tangible. I really like to make art, but I never specialized in it. So don't expect top-notch art. I think people are really lonely in this time. And so if I can offer you some of my time and you can kind of pretend like someone is hanging out with you, I think that's really nice. Um, yeah, today I'm gonna draw my friend Gabby. Um, I love them very much. And I wanna talk about hobbies. This is so good. There's a part of me that feels like I haven't really heard the word hobby since I was a kid. We all grew up to think that we needed to capitalize off of those hobbies. So I think there's a part of me that kind of forgot how to enjoy things. This quarantine is helping me discover new hobbies. I've been I've been really into wax seals. <laughs> it sounds ridiculous. I don't think so. I've been writing my friends letters and it's been really really nice. That that has been the most beautiful thing. Um, I think realizing that there are other ways I can connect with my friends. There was this video that my friend showed me where this guy describes that a writing is something that's uninterrupted and I really love that. I've been journaling as well. I wouldn't say that's a hobby. I, at this point, I think it is self-sustenance by doing it regularly. I do it very regularly. For a four page to start and end my day when I'm mailing my friends letters. I don't want to waste it and just put a sheet of paper in there. So I've been making my friends a lot of art and I find actually I prefer the art that I make for my friends with the intention of sending it off as opposed to the ones I want to make for myself which is interesting. Maybe internally it is my fear of failure. <laughs> I've also been getting into reading. I do struggle a lot with this internalized feeling that I am not an intelligent person. For so long I categorized myself as somebody who couldn't read. I did read a bit when I was a kid. I never really stuck to it. I always got really distracted while reading. I had this internal shame that I wasn't able to read or I couldn't stick with a book or read a chunk of text without getting so distracted and then not being able to read it. Which is why I feel like I'm not as informed about the world as I should be. My friend asked me once what the greatest compliment somebody could give me was and I said that if they called me intelligent, I wouldn't believe it, but that would probably be the greatest compliment. How I derived at the answer was I asked myself what my biggest insecurity was and it was my intelligence or lack thereof. I never really fit into boxes. I was constantly failing in school. I think I've just always been made to feel that I couldn't learn or I just couldn't digest information. These days, I've learned that that's not true and that I am teachable and that being teachable in itself already means I'm intelligent. There's a lot of people who are so stuck in their ways um, and don't want to learn. I've been reading this. Highly recommend it. Girls Can't Be in the Mafia by Daniel West. Huge trigger warning for um, abuse. Reading, I can say, is a hobby. The other day I had to go for an appointment somewhere it was something I had to go for. It's not, I'm not just defiantly leaving my house. And I put the book in my bag and I was like, just in case, I'm going to do some reading. And then I did. So many times I've put a book in my bag just in case I'm free for a few minutes and then I can read. And then I never do. Maybe some texts are not as accessible to me, but completely shutting reading down I'm over it. I can read. I can read. And I can learn. And an important part about existing is affirming yourself. 
over time we sense patterns in ourselves decide the things we like the things we don't like but the fact is is that we are ever changing you might find that something you weren't able to do or something you didn't like before actually now you might really like it like walking out I love walking out now I start off my days feeling like I have a purpose I'm setting a goal for myself even if I had nothing else on that day I know I said I never specialized in art but when I was in art school for film we had a foundation year and everybody had to learn the basics of everything and so I really really enjoyed my first year not that I didn't enjoy it afterwards but I really enjoyed it in a way that it it pushed me and I always had an interest in art but I never knew how to improve at art and sometimes at least for me what I found is that a lot of the times all I need is some guidance trying to pick up certain things they're very daunting when you feel alone in it. I probably needed someone to tell me what exactly I was doing right or wrong, even though there's no right or wrong in expression. I definitely needed that, and in that year alone, I improved so much that just brought back my love for art. Um, I had always loved it. I was never really consistent with it because I never thought I was great at it. I just thought, I don't, I don't know why um, I can never get my person to look like a person. Um, but I love the process. You're probably going to look at this and be like, oh. That could be me just coating my insecurities. I like to approach art in ways that feel more accessible to me. Like doodling. I think that helped a lot. I like the thought of big art pieces but every time I've tried to do a big art piece it has just been more overwhelming than it should be. wanted to go to art school when I was 12 and do visual arts and then I got rejected. I was so angry about it until years later when I found the portfolio. I understand why. I get it. I get why I didn't get in. It was just not good. <laughs> can somebody please tell me... I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if you can tell what kind of paint this is. I think it might be gouache, but I have no idea. I don't really know what I'm doing most of the time. But I know that I really like it. It's like a more forgivable watercolor. By the way, I have a single out called Rediscovery. I'll put the link in the description. It got released early this year. I was part of this thing called The Great Singapore Replay um, and it was a great experience. I really think we should be following our curiosity right now. If your biggest issue is that you're bored, go find something to do. Not my best work. Not my best work. For sure. I can try and save it. I can try and save it. I believe in you. You got this. I just got a message from Gabby. If only they knew I was drawing their face. I used to set up dates with my friends to just sit in cafes and make art. And that was a beautiful collective experience. I really like working in silence with friends. I think that is one of the things that I miss the most. We underestimate the power of being held accountable by someone. Someone who just wants the best for you. And like people you love, like your friends, and you don't want to disappoint them. Which is why I used to love running with friends. If I'm running side by side with a friend, that's like one of the most healing things. It's really interesting being back on YouTube after all these years. I'm definitely not coming back for the community. None of my YouTube friends make videos anymore. I don't know where they are. They're off living their lives. YouTube is a distant memory, a distant friend. Um, we don't talk to anymore. And yet, I have come back. Why? I'm not so sure. I've not really figured out why. I think I have the itch to create. For those who have followed my channel and only my channel, time has passed and you have absolutely no idea 
who I am or who I've become. There'll always be people who remember you for a certain era of your life or only knew you for that era. You are not the hero in everyone's story. Not that I was a terrible person on YouTube, I think I was fine and I was young and complicated. All the growth that you see yourself go through, not everybody's gonna see that. Not everybody's gonna get to know that. I was watching this video I made a long time ago and talked about how things are constantly changing and people are gonna leave your life and it's not your fault. And there is a lot of truth. I, I could just feel the amount of hurt, the amount of pain I was in, which was really sad to look back on. Growing up is really, really difficult. You experience so much fear growing up. At least I did. I was constantly terrified of everything. Despite the fact that I've grown and I might look back at those versions of myself and be like, oh, I'm not that anymore. It shows me that our past selves are real people. They might not exist anymore, but they were definitely real people with real fears and real complicated lives. And we might look at the fears that we used to have and be like, that is so unimportant. We should offer the same amount of empathy for them. God knows we probably needed it. Um, we probably still do need it. It definitely gives me a chance to really think about who 16-year-old Erica was. A lot of energy, anxious about a lot of things. I always wanted to act tough and act like they knew what they were talking about. It's probably not as bad as I think it is. Or maybe in a few hours I'll come back and think it is the, the most horrible thing. You can see it. Can you see it? This is my friend Gabby. Gabby, I drew you. I will mail this over to you soon. I really like to draw my friends. I think it makes drawing more exciting for me. <laughs> and I will do anything to see them. Even if that means they're made out of graphite. Thank you for making art with me today. I hope I was able to offer you some company and I hope you enjoyed my company. I wasn't so sure about making this because of how easily distracted I get. Thank you Mitch for the idea. I'm giving you your credit. If you want me to make a video about something specific, just let me know. You can comment below. See ya! Bye bye!